Hey, what's going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend, and today I'll be doing a first impressions of the Reebok Nano X3 Froning. So I have had a lot of asks about this model and I have finally had a chance to wear them out and about and to train in them. This model is set to go live on August 18th at 10 a.m. EST. So if you are an avid Nano Froning fan, then that is the timeline in which you're gonna wanna look for the shoe on. But that being said, this shoe is interesting and I have a lot of thoughts on them. So five first impressions that I have with the Nano X3 Froning is number one, if you wear the Nano X3 right now, you can expect a similar outsole and midsole feel with this shoe. They feel very identical with the lift and run chassis system built in and the overall flexibility of the shoe. I actually find that this model might be a little bit more flexible, which is actually I think a better thing because I will hit on that in my later points. But regarding stability, versatility, and the overall feel of that Float Rider Energy Foam midsole and the rubber outsole, I would say expect a very similar feel in the gym and for just casual wear as your Nano X3 gives you. My second first impression with this model is I like the appearance and how easy it is to slip on. So with this shoe, you have a booty style construction and you have a speed lacing system. So essentially you slide the shoe on, you pull the speed lacing system down, and then you pop that little speed lacing system through this elastic strap here to kind of tuck it away so it doesn't get in the way. Now I will say I find this to be a little bit hit or miss and I'll talk on that in a second, but I do love a training shoe that I don't have to necessarily overly adjust, especially if I wanna wear it more casually and then go do some casual training sessions in. So I think in that context, I really like this shoe. So I have done a lot of walking in New York City over the last two days. This has been a nice model to do that in. And then also I really love that I can just pop it on and off. And I do feel like the appearance of this shoe is pretty clean. I really like this colorway and the other colorways also look pretty good, but I do think the black and white colorway can be a little bit more casual in a daily use context. Now, my third first impression kind of piggybacks off of that speed lacing system. And with the booty style construction and with the system, I'm not convinced that you're gonna be able to get enough security for certain foot anatomies. Now, with this boot, I don't find it to be super secure and locked down. And honestly, I feel like that's an issue I've had with the past couple of Nano Froding models. This boot doesn't give you a ton of security towards the top here. And with this lacing system, even when I'm cranking them down, it just doesn't feel like it really locks down that foot. And so what I noticed is like, when doing a lot of lateral work and when doing single leg work, I was actually starting to bias and shorten my stride because I didn't like how this felt back here. So so I'm not a big fan of the boot construction. I'm really curious how other folks are going to internalize this. I didn't necessarily have my heels slipping out of the shoe, but I'm also not somebody that really likes having more space and more room in the heels. So I tread lightly when I say like, oh, this boot's not secure because I think it will be secure for some lifters and athletes. I'm just not the biggest fan of how lax it feels and how you can't get that midfoot super tight. So I'm really curious where the community lands with this because I honestly find it to be very hit or miss. I love it for the casual nature of it. I don't really love it for the security of it. And I did notice when I was training that I was biasing what I was doing because of this feature. My fourth first impression with this shoe is I really like this upper construction around the toe box. So we have a mesh and textile overlay here. So we have a lateral and medial support. I do feel like these give you a little bit of additional lateral support, which I like. And the upper doesn't feel like it's super, super heavy. We do have some leather overlays here, which does give the midfoot a heavier feel, but the toe box feels feels pretty lax and I like that about this shoe. So if you are somebody that wants a little bit of support on the lateral medial side of your toe box, but you do want an upper construction that does have a little bit of maneuverability to it, that's where I think this model will fit that box really well. Now that once again, the midfoot is a little bit heavy, so I don't think you're gonna have the most breathability through the midfoot, but I think because this shoe actually has like a looser fit through the boot, I think that might help a little bit with breathability, but I think that will be very variable depending on where you live, the climate you're in, and what your overall foot climate's like. My feet typically run a little bit on the cool side so breathability for me is a little bit more variable depending on the materials used in the shoes and the season but that all said the toe box is a little bit lighter in construction midfoot is heavier and the heel feels to be a little bit lighter and looser my fifth first impression with this shoe is that i think if you are an avid fan of the froning shoe line i think you will enjoy this shoe and honestly it might be worth grabbing just for the novelty of it i'm not going to say it's going to be the go-to shoe for everybody so that said if you're somebody who doesn't necessarily need the novelty of the froning line just go with the traditional nano x3 i think you will like that model security a little bit better but for my froning fans out there i don't think the shoe will be a miss so that would definitely be something to consider 
consider. And if you can get this shoe at a discount, I think it's a good model to honestly pick up and just have to the collection if you are somebody who collects these shoes. When it comes to sizing, expect the shoe to fit very similar to the Nano X3. So for my foot anatomy, I have a medium to slightly wider foot. I found the shoe to fit true to size. If you have a narrow foot width, you might want to go down a half size, but I think for most foot anatomies, true to size will be a safe call in this model. Now, what I would say is when you are thinking about that upper construction here, if you find that you typically have a lot of room at the end of your toe box, you might want to size down a half size just to kind of hedge your bets regarding the upper security. Because I do fear if this shoe does run too long for you with that lack of midfoot security here with the speed lacing system, that could lead you to some issues regarding heel slip and heel security. So definitely food for thought there. But I found this model to fit pretty true to size. And I think if I did size down a half size, it would be a little bit too snug in the toe box for my liking. All right, so now let's quickly go over the construction of the Nano X3 phoning before we take this video out. Look Looking at the toe box up here, you have an extended outsole layer that wraps up, and then once again, you have these textile overlays on the lateral and medial side of the shoe, and then you have this ribbed mesh material. Looking at the midfoot, you have some leather overlays that go from the elastic strap into the lateral and medial midfoot here. They kind of insert into that lift and run chassis system. And then you have an elastic strap here on the midfoot as well. This feels like it should be pretty durable, but again, with elastic straps, I would say these could break down a little bit faster than like a traditional lacing system. The lacing system itself is the speed lacing system. So that can be very hit or miss. If you like this typically in shoes, especially like things like trail shoes or running shoes, you might resonate with this model a ton. I like it for some things, but honestly, I find that it's security lacks a little bit and I touched on that earlier. You have some Reebok Nano X3 froning up here on the tongue. You have a booty style construction and then you have some foam inserts here with some froning branding as well to help give you additional security in the boot. You have an external heel tab back here and then looking at the boot itself like you can see it's not the most rigid and it doesn't have the most material so that's also why I kind of feel like I swim in this shoe at times. Looking at the midsole you have that Reebok Float Ride Energy Foam throughout. This is exactly consistent with the Nano X3. And then you have that rubber overlay here on the lateral midfoot and medial midfoot for rope climbing support. Looking at the outsole, you have the same outsole tread patterning as you do with the Nano X3. So you do have some grooves up here for additional maneuverability. And then back here, as you can see, you have the circle material. That's where that lift and run chassis system like dome kind of sits right above. But overall, I think that wraps up the gist of this shoe's construction. If you have additional questions on this model, drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer. And as always, y'all, drop a like on the video, drop to the channel. I will see you in the next one. Bye.